Hey gamers, we're going to continue our server building video series. Um, we're going to start now with using the random gen previewer and creating a map. So I'm going to just put in the settings I want and kick it off and then I'm going to sit and just talk you through what they all mean and what use they all are to you as you go and create your own map. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to kick it off. Um, so it does take quite a bit of time to actually generate these maps. I've been finding it's about seven minutes for an eight eight k map, round about ten to twelve minutes for a ten k map. It's quite CPU intensive a little bit at first. Um, I've got an i nine extreme edition processor and it it sits about fifteen percent, but it's more memory. I've seen up to 34 gig of RAM in use when generating a 10k map so you want to bear that in mind for your size if you've not got a really powerful PC. Um, I think an 8k map is pretty much a good size um, it really depends I guess how many people you think are going to be actually connecting to your server um, you know if you're only going to have a couple of you having a massive map is probably a bit pointless um, and you've also got to bear that in mind when people first connect they're going to have to download the map as well so you want to think about not necessarily making it as big as it as you can just for the sake of it okay so let's talk about these settings so we talked about the world size already the world seed is really um, just a random you can put anything in there it really makes no difference um, and it will just then create the topology of the whole map itself um, so the territory that we're going to use, so we're using the um, South Umavi County for our territory, that will be almost preset with the biomes, but where the seed itself can be a bit more random on top of where the, the towns are, where they're placed, how many you get, do you get cities or towns or what level of tier fives you get, so you may want to potentially experiment and use different seas to try and get that Goldilocks um, map that you want but to be honest with you I've got just a couple of simple criteria we're going to use for this map so we're kind of a little sick to be honest with mountains and hills we've done lots of maps with those um, and in the early days they're just a pain when you're walking or cycling or got the mini bike trying to get over them it's just you know it's difficult until you finally get to the gyrocopter so what we want to do is just have pretty much a super flat world with just mountains and hills around the outside of it um, so what we are going to do here is um, have a map that is really quite flat that has really no other features other than as many towns and POIs as we can fit in it. So let's talk about you've got four options in these sliders from none, few, default and many. So what we're selecting here is as many towns and POIs as it can place because we want really places to explore and to raid as many tier um, quest buildings that we can get from the trader as possible. You've then got rivers, so what you'll find is a river is, is just a snake piece of water that's on the map. Um, and having that on there means there's less towns to generate. Now, obviously, you've got a concern, where am I going to get water from as a water source? But you find a lot of POIs do have water um, with them. So craters is really just, think of it like, a, as a, imagine a meteor has hit the land and you've got, you've got a kind of a bowl. So again, you've just got something else where a POI can't spawn on. They look pretty but we're going to take them off altogether. A crack, think of it a bit like maybe the Grand Canyon kind of thing. So it, they're useful to have um, something where you can easily get down and mine from but again it's just taken away from POIs. And lakes are the same, great for a water source, look very pretty but again taken away from the POIs. So we've set all of those to none and 
Then we'd come to hills and mountains. So hills are smaller bumps, um, really talking about sort of the undulation of the ground, whereas mountains will create the huge ranges that you see, um, quite hilly areas, and some of them can be very, very difficult to get over. So <clears throat> what we're going to end up having here is a very super flat world with no hills and mountains. We're going to have no lakes, cracks, craters or rivers. So there's a lot more space for towns and PRIs and uh, roads all to be generated within that. When the map actually creates itself, <clears throat> what it first starts doing is generating the terrain. So it starts with the biome from the territory, then the terrain of building your hills and mountains. It adds the lakes and the cracks and the, the craters to the map. And then it needs to try and calculate what space have I got left to plop down a town. And then after the town is done, then it starts looking at the wilderness POIs itself and trying to pop them down and, and then generate a road to them. So um, it's obviously quite um, useful to have those and it makes a much more feature rich map. But you know we've played Seven Days to Die a lot, we've tried lots of different maps, we've had POIs built underground, in mountains, on top of hills, um, taken over other POIs that are part of, uh, on the outside of a town and all sorts. So we want to try something different this time. So these are the settings we're going for. Um, have I talked about all of them? Uh, the only one I've not talked about is random So and planes actually. So planes, I'm not really sure what does. I've tried to do a bit of a search and find down. I can't really find an explanation for it. There's a couple of forums I've seen where they seem to think it's the more planes you have, the more towns that are generated. I've tried having a slider all the way down, all the way up, it doesn't seem to make any difference with anything that I can really see. So if somebody knows, post it in the video and I can do some testing to confirm that. Now random, as you start increasing the slider of random, your selection above just start to get randomized. So almost ignoring, if you put it on full random, it almost ignores everything above. So bear that in mind. Okay, so this map generated in about five minutes. Um, that's quite quick this time. I think probably because I've set a lot of these settings to none, it went through a lot quicker. So we can use the right mouse button to basically hold down and drag around and have a look. So we can see we've got a large piece of forest. We've got quite a large desert area. Um, we've got a bit of wasteland over there, we've got a large snowy area so I think that looks quite good in terms of the territory and the biomes created. It does still have quite a hilly area around the outside it also has a sea front to one side so we've got sea sort of both two sides and then hills the other two sides so I think that's quite good. Now in the background what it's now doing is it's it's while it loaded the territory and the biomes it's now just plotting and displaying all of the POIs and you can see them all starting to generate here. Um, so this gives you an idea of just um, how many big towns you've got, how many little POIs there are. So we've got a couple of good towns close by over here in the snow biome. We've got a huge city over here and in the, uh, in the wasteland. We've got quite a number here of towns and big city over there in the desert and then in the forest biome we've got one big sort of square town another quite large city there looks like there's a skyscraper. Now you can use the WASD keys and come in and have a look. So let's go over to the forest biomes and just take a look just so you can see those. So we have got some skyscraper in there. So I think that looks quite good. We've got quite an open area here between those two towns. So I think that might make a good place to start an initial base, assuming we spawn in the forest. Um, 
another potential base in the wasteland or the desert over here. There's a lot of towns over that way. So I think that looks quite good. I'm gonna so I think we'll just take this and use it and see how we get on. So the next thing what I want to show you is really the generated world. So if you go into your C drive, into users, your username, app data roaming, seven days to die, and generated worlds, you will see a folder created which matches your territory. So we've got the um, self humanity country we've also got that same folder here created so this gives you now a picture of what that actual biome looks like as you can see and this pretty much represents what we saw in game the other thing to look at here that you might be interested in is the prefabs.xml so I'm just going to open that up and this will give you a list of all of the prefabs that have been loaded and their position but what I want to use this for is verifying that we've got um, a dip, all of the skyscrapers because those are some of my favorite um, tier 5 POI so there's four skyscrapers so if we do a find on page we see here we've got skyscraper 1, 3 and 4 sorry 1, 3 and 2 all right next to each other in this let's have a look have we got four and we've got four as well so we've got the four skyscrapers I'm happy with that um, it's got the right amount of tier fives that I want so we're going to take now this um, this generated map and we'll learn how to create a um, save from it so let's pause the video here and we'll come back in a moment okay so I just needed a quick break um, so let's get into the next stage so now we need to use the world editor so we've got our generated um, territory here so we're going to select that and make sure we've got load world selected and we'll click start and what this will allow us to do is actually go into almost a game view where we can see all the POIs and we can actually edit this world and make any additions that we want in it. So um, we can, we're going to basically use this to place additional POIs into the world. So you could, if you find you found a really good map that you particularly want to use, but um, you haven't really got enough POIs, you can actually use this tool to drop in additional POIs. So if you wanted to have additional tier fives, you wanted to put in, you know, some of the um, pre-made ones like bars or hotels or schools or, you know, whatever it may be, you can do that with this tool. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to drop in just one POI just so I can show you um, really how that works. So we're just waiting for the world to initialize as we're running it for the first time. It does take a, just a couple of minutes. Um, so it will also create a player location and we need to bear that in mind when we first load it. But Okay, so here we are, we're in the world. So you've basically got the creative menu to debugging on and so on straight from the bat so let's get some height up and then we can see where we're at so this was that in the forest biome that large city we saw there's two skyscrapers there next to each other and this was the other one that we saw just over in the distance and I think having the base that we created the castle earlier a good spawn point for that will be between these two cities so I'm thinking just looking at the map as I move closer I want to get a bit of a distance away from this one and almost be sort of I guess around halfway between the two So we're just getting a bit further, a 
I think this one is the larger city looking at it, so perhaps actually I just want to be a bit closer to that one, but just away from these wilderness POIs. So I'm thinking maybe just a bit more this way. And I think that was probably going to be a good location for us. Yeah, okay, I like that. So we're going to come down. Um, now what will happen is when we place the POI, it will overwrite whatever else is on those blocks at the time. Okay, so we're going to go into press escape. We're going to go to the prefab browser. And then we can search for it. So we'll search for CTV1 castle and we'll load it up. So that's the castle. So I'm just going to come in. Remember the editing tools we use. We use Z to place a block. We then take the castle and we click place. Okay, so it's been put down. So let's have a zoom out. Just make sure that we're comfortable with its location and its distance to other POIs. I don't think there's anything else around. So, yeah, I think that looks good. So you can rotate it um, if you like, but actually I think that looks fine. So the next step to do, if you want to place any other additional POIs, you can search for them, you can use the various tools to narrow down the criteria to help you find it easier if you know the name of it, like Skyscraper for example, you can do that and also utilize that to place additional skyscrapers or additional tier 5s. You could do that on the outskirts of towns, you could do them as wilderness POIs if you really wanted. So that's just a simple how to place your prefab. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is save this. So what we're actually doing is saving now the world that we've created. We see at the bottom we've got a world saved. Um, so that's it done. So we're going to exit now the world editor. And the next one we need to do is to now create a actual working game for it. So we click new game. You need to make sure that you have the county that you have you want you're going to be using. So it's pre-selected because we were editing it. But make sure that that world game world is the one that you created for the territory. The game name really is going to be your save name. So I'm going to put CT1 CTVI um, server. Okay, and the rest of the settings don't really matter because when we dump them into the server, the server has its own configuration and it will overwrite these. So we're going to click start. And what will happen now is we're going to actually be taking that world that we've created and edited. We're then going to create a new save game from it and we'll actually be put into the game ready to start on day one okay so at this point we want to stop what we're doing and um, we don't want to explore we don't want to do anything wherever we may be and um, that's fine um, now you could at this point go and sort of track down the POIs that you've done but because I've got the confidence I know it's there I'm not going to do that in this stage um, this is also the first time, realistically, your physics of your POI will also be tested because during the creation in the prefab, prefab editor, it doesn't use the physics. It doesn't use the physics when you're dropping in the POI. It's here and now, and when you get close to it, if you haven't done that right, you'll find you'll have a collapse somewhere. So you may want to do it just so you can actually see the... Um, uh, ensuring that it is positioned right and it has the right structure but I'm going to leave that for now because I've got the confidence and I, don't, and I want to take this straight off the bat and into a server so I don't want to go around exploring because of one of the mods we're going to use and I'll talk about that when we get to building the server. Okay so that's done 
I'm going to exit out and the next part really is now taking this and putting it into a server so we're going to do that in the next tutorial so I hope you found this useful bye for now